these last few weeks or these last few not weeks, let me not be honest, these last few months, I think some of you have probably noticed as well with my lack of, you know, club night reviews and stuff and my lack of Bergheim updates, um, going there physically myself instead of just news online. I've been feeling a little bit miffed by the whole clubbing scene, I think. Maybe it's because I'm not really enjoying my DJ at the moment. I've kind of taken my foot off the pedal in terms of recording mixes and listening to stuff and generally just being immersed in that world. Maybe that's taint that's kind of like somehow influencing my behavior when it comes to just being a raver and a quote unquote punter on the dance floor. But I think in general, I've kind of had this feeling ever since we kind of came out of lockdown. I've kind of felt like I've been missing, you know, I've been, I've, I've been kind of offbeat by just half a second. It kind of feels like by a millisecond or something, I'm just not there where I need to be. And I'm not too sure if it's because of the age thing, if it's just because of the time thing, or if it has to do with you know, spending the last two and a half years as, we, as most of us did, right, under some type of lockdown where you weren't able to go to regular clubs, it kind of made me, you know, it kind of, I'm not kind of in practice, right? I haven't got a lot of practice in my bones, in my body and shit. So when we finally were allowed to go back outdoors, I kind of felt a little bit behind the mark. That might be the reason. I'm not really too sure. Either way, something that has been bothering me for a bit and I haven't really figured out a good way to kind of handle it and sort it. And I guess... The only other thing I've been trying to do is trying to make like, you know, house party and fun, trying to make the whole idea of like, you know, streaming sets at home fun, getting on it at home somewhat fun. But it doesn't really replicate the feeling or the vibe of going to a club and kind of sharing that experience rand with like random strangers in there. It's never, ever going to explain it. So I need to find a way to kind of reactivate that because I feel like I'm not kind of out of it because I clearly still enjoy going to places like Berkheim. And I think maybe in the long term, I'm probably going to choose an option of going to like abroad to rave, you know, twice a year and maybe a, a festival. So maybe it might involve like three or four, like really big, not all big, well, three or four nights out. And then the rest of it, just I'll kind of play it by ear. But the idea of me kind of raving on the London scene week in, week out has kind of got a bit boring and I'm kind of over it. I've kind of seen most of the things I need to see. And the times when I do go out, I think with very few exceptions, there's a few parties out there that do some great stuff. Um, Tech culture that happened just the other day in Fold is absolutely amazing. Um, and a few other people as well I'm, I'm forgetting to name right now. But in general, there's not really a lot of kind of great party promotions out there or raves or clubs really that are really pushing things and really kind of taking things to the next level. It's all kind of the same old, same old, isn't it? Even my beloved Fold, unfortunately, is kind of, you know, succumbing to the same issues. And I'm not too sure if it's because, you know, I'm kind of over Fold or maybe Fold's getting a little bit too bait. Or maybe they just, you know, they're a business and they have to try other things because that place is open, not just to serve the whims of myself or other kind of trendy cool kids, but it's there to essentially, you know, um, provide a space for all people who make music or who kind of, you know, build themselves under the banner of quote unquote electronic music. And I'm sure they also have an aspect of their place where it's just a commercial place where people go and do photo shoots and shit and adverts and whatever it may be and bits of filming. So they have loads of obligations they have to kind of meet. So that might kind of influence the quality or lack thereof of the parties I've kind of gone there and been a bit you know underwhelmed I had to spend like 30 quid and I've left at like 3 a.m because I wasn't enjoying myself now that could it would be me it could be the place who knows but they had a really interesting discussion about it on the techno subreddit that I'm actually going to play for you now or not play well I'm actually going to show you now actually if I can get up on my screen and bear with me a second here not that one it's this one there we go. Yeah, they had a really interesting um, conversation about it on the techno subreddit where they basically were speaking about the same things and their conclusion mostly was that it was it was drugs that have changed the kind of climate or changed nightlife forever and kind of not made it as enjoyable as it once was, which I'm not really too sure that's the case. I think drugs have always been a good and bad part of the dance music slash electronic music scene. I think it just is what it is. Um, I think nightlife in general kind of has a very fraught relationship with drugs and how it helps and sometimes hinders the scene and i don't think it's any different nowadays but some people will swear to you that you know the introduction of ghb or the popularity of it in the last few years the popularity of even ketamine in the last few years has really taken things to the next level i've seen you know i've watched a vice documentary recently in ibiza of these two guys who were uh, i guess bartenders there and they kind of double up in, in at night as also dealers but they obviously do all their own gear because it's just you know it's probably hard to balance being a business person and also being a, 
a, a, a bartender in that scene over there. But I remember during the whole entire video where they were filming it, like they were taking, you know, pro proper big, healthy bumps of cake no ketamine sorry Kate. ketamine the whole time they were doing the, the interview and it's clear to see that judging by that clip judging by what i've seen when i go outside judging by what i read online that clearly you know ghb and k have kind of taken over the scene in a big big way so i know i've heard some people say maybe the, the whole cocaine thing is an issue because people say cocaine becomes like a drug where it sort of makes you lose your, I won't say inhibitions, but you lose a little bit of your manners. You become a little bit more kind of direct and shit. You become a bit of an, an oaf, an ogre. So maybe that kind of lends to it. But the stuff that I've seen out when I've been out has been more people looking and acting like zombies as opposed to the usual, you know, standard. This is my space. What the fuck are you doing here? Shoulder barges that you get in certain, you know, queer LGBTQ plus spaces, which makes sense anyway, because, you know, us straights are sort of like invading all of their hallowed spaces. So it makes sense that they walk around with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, a little bit of attitude because we're kind of taking up room. But I don't think it's a drugs. I think it's all the things included. But this thread kind of speaks about it. And I want to kind of go over some of the answers or you know, open it up with the original post and then go down with some of the answers of other um, Redditors and what they've said and kind of add my two pence. So the thread title is, have the drugs changed or was it going on in clubs or what is going on in clubs? Question mark. The person asked the following question. Lately, you can notice a shift in behavior in techno clubs and festivals. I speak of Germany here. One that is rather ego, ego, egoistic, or ego, I guess egotistic. Um, I'd argue driven by a mix of so-called designer drugs. I don't speak of usual bump of speed, commander MDMA. This is different. It certainly hasn't miraculously started since COVID, but the vibe has noticeably changed in a peculiar or even dark way. Have you noticed something similar? How do you see it? I'm interested. I find that he said designer drugs because this person said designer drugs because I do remember hearing a few people say to me when I was out actually that that's another thing that's been bubbling on the underground. Not even the regular class A's that we're used to, but the research chemicals. There's quite a few of them that have popped up that basically, I guess the idea behind them is that they combine the best of like an MDMA and like a speedy or cocaine type of vibe in order to kind of give you the best type of experience. And I guess the best example of it will be that 2c drug that everyone takes in um colombia and other parts of i guess central south america that's that's you know it's got a bit of pink coloring on it and shit and people take that because it gives them a high and also makes them feel kind of euphoric and shit so i think that's also been an issue so can you can imagine if people are getting dodgy normal quote-unquote class a is full of fentanyl can you imagine just how sketchy and dodgy and really unreliable the whole rc scene is imagine how unreliable the whole research chemical scene is crazy anyway the first um reply here from somebody says as follows okay older raver here in the 40s mostly clubbing in london been going out since the 90s i would say on this subject is this it's always been this way which i agree but there's more choice and less reason to bump into darker crowds back in the day if you didn't want to there are good parties and good crowds and good clubs but bad parties with good crowds and good parties and bad crowds and they can often be hit and miss the good nights are all over um, but you may have to hunt to find them if things feel like they have been not have gone less less enjoyable and i have to agree with this because i think from what I've seen anyway, again, I'm not super plugged in as I once was. I'm not promoting parties as often as I did. I'm not DJing as often as I did. I'm not even going out as much as I did. But I do follow a few people here and there, especially on my main Instagram page, who are way cooler than I am and a lot more plugged in. And from what I can see, sometimes when I'm on their Instagram stories and shit, I see that they're usually at spaces that don't look like conventional club spaces. They're either somebody's warehouse space, they're either a converted space, it's even a legal rave or something that's kind of like hush hush friends and family. I've even heard through the great fan of certain people, especially in the gay scene, they have a they have a rule with some of their good parties where they're not even allowed to post them up on the main event listing pages. They're not allowed to post about it on their social medias. It's like a thing that they do. They kind of send a memo to each other. Hey, we've got this rave going on. We've got this great DJs playing. We want to keep the vibe like, you know, nice and gay and not have the straights there. Don't post it anywhere. So clearly there is from those actions. I feel like they, all of those people who are usually on the cutting edge, even they're recognizing the regular club scenes a bit shit. So they're purposely creating their own little things, but also making it sure that they're only keeping it to themselves. So I feel like 
that's proof that there are other things out there but i feel like some of the things out there they don't really want you to be there you know they don't want you to go there they kind of want you to be shh so it continues in the early days everywhere seemed epic carried on the wave of euphoria rapes of little helpers and being part of a young crowd as time goes on um the, the euphoria experience is not as focused and you start to see the real environment this is the classic things are not as good as they used to be true and i've kind of fell in the same sort of trap before i think i felt that when i went to flipping Bergheim a few years ago I, no sorry a few months ago no maybe it was no yeah it was last year actually last year in June when I went Bergheim and I made this massive rant that everybody was kind of high-fiving me about in my Instagram stories but after the fact I kind of felt really embarrassed and a little bit corny and cringy because it kind of just felt you know it was kind of in one part it was like an old man screaming at the fucking clouds and another way it was also a little bit of a humble brag oh i've been there and now i'm over it it kind of felt i kind of felt a little bit gross i was kind of embarrassing myself that's why i ended up taking it down very quickly but i even i've even i've succumbed to that and i'm usually i feel like i got more to try to be as self-aware as i can about my position and where i am and shit in my life with these sort of things but even i can fall in that trap so it continues However, this is only half the story. A lot of people go out to listen to music. They want to meet new people, dance all night and have a smile on their face. There's always been the other crowd, though, the ones who just want a night out, don't mind a fight, drink or don't get happy or don't get the same happy vibe from pills. But then we are. But then there are ravers. Sorry. But then my eyes here are going crazy but then there are hundreds of venues that they would often go to the biggest venues that had the biggest advertising budget the happier the happier ravers were going to the other nights which were held in less known spaces however as clubs have reduced over the last 15 odd years neither side has the same number of options lumping us all together in the same venues far more often and this is definitely a good point because this is my prime point when it comes to the whole thing that we have in the uk where we have these really draconian insane insane drinking fucking laws where essentially forget london let's say a smaller town outside of london usually their part their pubs will close at 11 and if they have a club or if they have a cocktail bar they'll usually stop serving at 12 so usually in those smaller towns what you end up seeing is like because the pubs don't have a long window to stay open they'll usually have drink promotions, especially on the weekends to get people to come in there early and to hang around because they know if they can get somebody in the pub early, most likely they're not going to just come in for one round. They're going to stay for two, three or four. So they'll give them insane drink deals. That mean they'll get super drunk. They won't be eating that whole time because most pubs don't, you know, they don't have food. The ones that do have food, they're not probably worth that going to for a night out. And then most likely after at 11, when they all get chucked out of the pub, they're all steaming from drinking from like i don't know four to eleven with no food maybe a couple pack of crisp or whatever and then they all you know spill over into the nearest club that's in their vicinity and then all that club ends up getting a whole load of punters who have been drinking since four plus whoever comes to their cocktail bar or club specifically for their thing and you just get two of the you know weirdest crowds together in that space and then at two a.m. when that club space closes you get all of those people spilling out to the street at the same time which is no surprise why those places usually or those smaller towns have usually people fighting in the streets and going crazy i saw it happen when i went to visit an old friend in flipping hastings a long time ago it was the same sort of vibe like as soon as we all left this kind of like you know quasi cocktail bar place whatever um that was also a club we then suddenly ended up with people that we saw earlier in the pub people that we saw earlier outside drinking the street all together on the street at the same time whereas if you had you know more looser relaxed you know drinking laws or permissions similar to what they have in berlin where essentially everything's open until 6 a.m you end up having people coming a little bit earlier also leaving any time between like 9 to 6 a.m because there's such a long window to drink whereas in the uk we don't so people rush they to take all their babies down they end up getting too drunk and end up leaving those clubs incredibly intoxicated and sometimes that ends up spilling over at home you know with you know what and it gets worse and worse and worse it continues the hard to the reply it says the good nights and the good crowds will exist but you need to hunt them if it takes you a while to find something great then it'll take only the de dedicated ravers of the scene effort to find them as well choose what less known venues with specific lineups look at places 
where the crowd has less of an older raver. You'll find the magic in those venues. Often smaller parties are better when a club holds 200 people and you all know each other by the end of the night, they are out there, but it might take time to find them. When you do enjoy, they still do exist. And that's the truth, really. I think if anything, all of these challenges probably should embolden you to try and venture out and find new things or do what I did when I was coming up in the scene. I felt like I wasn't getting my shot. I still don't think I'm getting my shot now. And what I did, instead of complaining and crying about it, I just went and started my own club night, right? Like with a friend and just put that on, booked myself to play, um, booked people that I loved to see playing. And eventually it turned into a selfish, let me just give myself an excuse to play every month. And it also just turned into a selfless, let me put on the finest party I can put on. Because my whole thing was that I've always hated people who, you know, um, would send their friends dms or messages and say hey come to my night come to my this come to my that i always went to put on an amazing party that my friends would want to come to voluntarily they didn't have to come because they were my friend i was never going to be the one to tell you to like my thing share this no i don't care like that um it's not that deep i'll put out my work if my work's good enough you'll come if you don't you don't but it was about servicing and it's about creating you know amazing memories which i think we probably hopefully did and i think the same thing happened nowadays so if you're out there and you think the raves are dead and they're shit and you feel like your friends are you know are better and you do cooler things then go and set up your own thing it really isn't that hard to do pull your resources together you know hire a venue usually venues are not that expensive really especially if you're splitting the cost between a group of friends especially if they already have equipment and then bang, you throw on your party. And these days, even if you don't want to, you don't want to flip in, hire a place of legitimately, you can do stuff illegally nowadays. And the cost is fairly low also. You know, you just got to do your Googles and kind of find out where you want to go and go from there. But I guess the crux of the issue is mostly if you hear someone like myself who's got a quote unquote platform talking about it, then usually the party's already dead, right? Because I'm obviously not the person that's super plugged into all things. So if it's underground and you haven't heard it from me, or if it's something you haven't seen a lot of people talk about, it usually means it's a good thing. So continue doing that, I would say. Let's read a couple more of these replies because I thought some of them were really, really informative. Another person said here, which I agree, this is completely opposite. Um, reply they said i think what you're getting to is the classic parties were better before what happened to techno question mark i don't know how old you are or how long you've been going to techno parties for but i read an article a while ago on rave parties where the author had interviewed a lot of people of all ages and basically everybody was saying that parties used to be better before but what does before mean since everybody began partying at a different period before means for everyone the moment they began partying you're young the scene is new the drugs are new the scene music is new everything is amazing and five years later you're older and the most people in the club and festivals it's not as new it takes longer to recover from parties that's definitely one of my big issues and i also don't think anything has changed that much it's just that you did sure there are people coming in because of tiktok whatever that means but they're not responsible for completely changing the vibe of the clubs in germany no for sure i think if anything I think the German question is a bit different because I think it's a bit unique because I feel like in Berlin specifically, not in Germany overall, but in Berlin specifically, I think they've had it too good for too long. They've had a little bit of a quasi rave utopia over there where things are just too sweet for way too long. And they've never really been subjected to the, to the pains and the fucking horror of commercialism. And I feel like they're finally getting it now with this whole new TikTok raver generation of people, especially that girl that I featured last time on the podcast, who is a door picker at a very popular club over there in Berlin. And I think from what I read online, that's kind of a thing they do a lot. Um, people that are well known um, have got a bit of a following online. They sometimes get invited to do the door at these places because it's another extra bit of cachet the club can add to its kind of a law and the lineup and whatnot. So I think they are, for the first time, you know, nowadays kind of experiencing that kind of corny, cringy side of things where I feel like in the UK specifically, we've had every iteration of it where it comes to drum and bass when that got really cheesy, cause corporate and commercial and really kind of lame and also kind of tech house, deep house when that became kind of, you know, corny, commercial and lame also, we've kind of had to battle those two things happening at the same time, right? Because those people that were quote unquote trendy and cool who were listening to tech house and deep house at one time and then suddenly the party's full of shufflers and no one wants to listen to it anymore and the same thing's happening with the techno scene also there's a kind of alternate techno scene there's a commercial techno scene there's an underground one there's all these different sort of places but i feel like they were 
over there in Berlin anyway, they specifically were a bit fortunate. They didn't ever have to kind of go through that and they're kind of going through it now. And if anything, really, from what I've been able to see, yes, the TikTok generation or TikTok ravers are different, but effectively it's just a different age bracket really and truly um or maybe a different kind of background of person who probably wouldn't have seen something on instagram because they use tiktok mainly but it's mainly what i've seen just an age thing a lot of younger younger people are on tiktok and they can you know they, they consume the content on there and whatever or they you know connect to certain things differently than older folks that or you know on all the other social media platforms like facebook instagram do it's just the nature of the beast um Let's continue here and let's do this. One more and I'll move. What's another top one? Uh, this one's, um, okay, this person said it sounds like it might be Coke. When I'm from, um, you, we see this progression where a club starts say, really good with an underground vibe full of people who know how to party, then becomes a mainstream and the Coke balls appear. That's when there's time to move on to a new venue. I think this is more relating to straights, really, Coke balls. I feel like a lot of people say this, but I don't know. From what I've been seeing when I went out, especially that time I went to Berghain and, you know, I was helping that girl that looked like she was, you know, out of it. She basically, after, you know, we kind of got to got her back to her friends, I realized, or I realized with the person I was with, that most likely she was on GHB. That's what kind of made her this sort of zombie character. And I've seen people complain about this for a while. Um, that one guy, I forgot his name, um, the one guy who nearly got flipping, um, who nearly got RSO closed down for good when you complained about getting chucked out of some party. He said he was a, a big, you know, GHB addict. There's a few people that I know of in my extended friend group that live over Berlin who've had issues with GHB. So clearly that drug has definitely did a number on the gay scene overall of people over there. It's definitely affected them in a bad way. So I'm not surprised really that that is something that is kind of negatively affecting the scene. And I think that has more of a negative effect than the Coke thing. I would say anyway, I think that thing is definitely, definitely more of an issue going on there. But again, maybe it's changing, maybe it's getting different. But I think overall, those sort of things and then, you know, the convergence of people essentially all coming out at the same time is a bit weird to think that doesn't get spoken about enough, right? Like, I don't know what, you're 15 when the, when the pandemic starts and then you, it ends and you come out of it and you're maybe what, 17, 18? going to your first clubs with no in-between experience there, going from like sitting at home watching whore mixes and then suddenly going to a fucking warehouse rave. It's no wonder you're going to be freaking out. And then the same thing if you're like, you know, mid-20s and now you're in your late 20s and you're coming back out again and some of your friends have, you know, gotten married, had kids, had more kids and now you're suddenly still out there still fucking throwing shapes. It's no surprise people are feeling a little bit conflicted and a little bit weird. But in general for me, I think in conclusion, I'm at the point where I'm basically more so focusing on just getting back into, you know, loving what I do again and kind of just doing it for the fun of it. Like as good as it would be to start playing in more clubs again, you know, I have to be honest with myself. I've not really done the work necessary in the last whatever, however many years I've kind of stopped playing out regularly to kind of make that happen. And I just, you know, need to get back to enjoying playing music before, like I did before. You know, I'd kind of make my own little mini radio shows. I'd do my own little mixes and stuff. And it was all, it was all kind of for myself. And I don't think I ever sent many of those mixes to like places to get booked. I swear on my life. I think the only thing I can, the only place I can think of that I sent mixes to back in the day was maybe like Ridley Road Market Bar because I heard like High basically got her, you know, her start from there. She played there as a resident and kind of got noticed by somebody. And then she became one of the biggest teachers in the world. But for the most of it, I just kind of kept the mixes to myself, put them on SoundCloud and just kind of enjoyed, you know, another sort of like creative outlet that I could kind of, you know, push my energies into. And also, weirdly enough, selfishly, it was also a good way to sort of like display, illustrate and flex my musical acumen, my musical range, right? To show, okay, cool. I'm not just, you know your kind of default black guy or default goon as I would say my old blog name and I had all this different interests that I was into so making you know mixing and DJing was a good way to kind of show that off because you were able to kind of you know start off your set with a jazz record end it with a classical record play some disco play some play some techno play some house all this stuff in between and you could kind of you know flex that you kind of knew all this stuff and you were clearly in the know um, even though people maybe would see you on you know on paper and think no you wouldn't get it so that was always good so maybe that's what i'll end up going back to just to kind of get that love 
going back again and then hopefully that would also kind of bleed into my raving experiences so they would become more enjoyable but I think overall my new practice of kind of you know approaching nights out more so as a kind of cool thing to do here and there throughout the year three or four times plus a festival is definitely the way to go because I feel like those are more memorable than going out every weekend to these kind of shitty nights that aren't that great and just kind of effectively chasing the dragon and you know most of the time never catching it so I'd rather kind of just you know gear up for the big events and go from there because to this day I'm still kicking myself now still kicking myself now that I wasn't able to go to fucking um Berger and CSD I'm honestly kicking myself I wish I was able to go but you know unfortunately um I just didn't plan it well enough and then by the time it came back around the flight tickets were just crazy and it didn't happen so it kind of is what it is